So Anthony Joshua split from his longtime trainer Rob McCracken just over a year ago now. And up until this point, he'd remained very tight-lipped on the reasons for the split. Whenever Rob McCracken's name was mentioned, he was very respectful. He didn't give much away. He was complimentary and so on. But now all of a sudden in a recent interview, he's come out and said that Rob McCracken wasn't committed enough to him basically. And he didn't teach good defense. And he cited Carl Frutch's nose as an example of that. So why the sudden change? Why after being tight-lipped over the reasons for splitting with McCracken, is he now spilling the beans? Well, we can only speculate, but if we look at the Robert Garcia situation, for example, he worked with Robert Garcia for the Alexander Usyk rematch. And it seemed to be a very strange relationship because Robert Garcia, it seemed, as an outsider looking in, had to go through intermediaries to speak to Anthony Joshua. It's as if he didn't have a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with his fighter, which is a very disturbing thing, particularly going into a fight of that magnitude. What was the reason for that? Was Anthony Joshua not used to being spoken to a certain way? Because Robert Garcia said that when he first hooked up with AJ, he told him that you're going to hate me some days when I come in the gym and when I start telling you certain things. You won't like me, but it's going to make you a better fighter. Is that what it was down to? Was AJ being deaverish and he just didn't like the way he was being spoken to because people speak to him with more respect? I don't know. But whatever the case may be, there was this weird separation between them within the actual camp. Robert Garcia later revealed that he actually threatened to leave the camp on several occasions and had to be convinced to stay. So things definitely didn't go smoothly. And after the fight, obviously AJ had that mental meltdown in the ring after the Usyk rematch. And in the days that followed, Robert Garcia came out and did several interviews where he said that Anthony Joshua basically has a weak mindset and that Alexander Usyk's got more heart than him. Now I agree with both those things. I'm not saying he's got a weak mindset compared to the average person, but compared to the elite heavyweights, the U6s and the Furies of the world, his mindset is not as strong. And I do agree with Garcia that Alexander U6's got more heart than AJ. But as a trainer, if you're going to deliver these home truths about your fighter, you say it to him. If you start saying it publicly in interviews right after he's lost to Usyk, that's not going to go down well, particularly a guy like Anthony Joshua, who seems like a very private person. And Robert Garcia's here spilling the beans about stuff that happened in camp and saying AJ's got a weak mindset and all this kind of thing. I made several videos at the time, still on my channel. You'll see the thumbnails on the screen. I made videos at the time saying this ain't going to go down well with <laughs> Anthony Joshua. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the last time he works with Robert Garcia. He might see this as a betrayal of trust. And indeed, several months later, Anthony Joshua did say that because Garcia was saying certain things in interviews, that's why, or at least that's part of the reason why he decided to leave him. And remember, AJ never really responded to Garcia. He never clapped back at him or said anything disrespectful. Whenever Garcia's name was mentioned, AJ said, yeah, he's a bad boy trainer. He's a great trainer. But that part where Garcia went public immediately after the Usyk rematch and started saying certain things, it didn't go down well. And this is why I say, it doesn't matter how good a trainer you are, as far as teaching technique, for a relationship between fighter and trainer to work, the trainer has to understand the fighter's personality. They have to know how to deal with that type of personality. They have to know how to communicate with them in such a way that the fighter does what they want them to do. And that's not always as straightforward as you think, because you might be thinking, well, you just tell him, or it's some drill sergeant thing where you just say, yo, do this, do that, get down 20 push-ups. Some fighters are not going to respond to that very well. I mean, an example would be Lennox Lewis back in the days. His first professional trainer was a guy called John Davenport. And one of the reasons that Lewis left John Davenport is because John Davenport was like a drill sergeant. Lennox Lewis spoke about this in his autobiography, came out in the 90s. And eventually Lewis said, nah, I'm not being spoken to like this. And he left Davenport for Pepe Correa. Correa was basically a cheerleader. So Lewis went from one extreme to the other. It didn't work out that well with Correa, ultimately. Lewis got knocked out by Oliver McCall. Then he switched over to Manny Stewart. And Manny Stewart, my understanding of their relationship was he wasn't really a drill sergeant, but maybe he was like a happy medium between the John Davenports of the world, the hard disciplinarian, and the Pepe Correa type character. Stewart was right there in the middle in terms of his 
way of dealing with the fighter. Not the stuff he teaches, but his methods of communication. And of course, that worked out very well for Lennox Lewis. Another example I've given in the past is Angelo Dundee, the trainer of Muhammad Ali. When Ali, Cassius Clay as he was then, first went down to Dundee's gym in Miami, Dundee was watching him spar, and he saw that the sparring partner that a young Ali Cassius Clay was in with was open to uppercuts, but Ali wasn't throwing any uppercuts. Dundee recognized that Ali is a really egotistical person. He's the kind of guy it's difficult to advise because he thinks he knows it all. So Dundee very cleverly, while watching Ali spa, said, that's a beautiful uppercut you just threw then. That's the best uppercut I've ever seen a heavyweight throw. He appealed to Ali's ego. And all of a sudden, Ali started throwing these uppercuts that he wasn't throwing before. You see how that works? So a trainer has to know something about psychology, specifically his fighter's psychology, right? But of course, not every trainer is going to know how to deal with every personality type. Some trainers are going to gel more or find it easier to work with certain personality types more so than others. But anyway, back to AJ and Rob McCracken. Who knows why he's come out and said this stuff. It's kind of out of character for AJ a little bit to say something publicly about a former team member when that person hasn't said anything disrespectful or critical about him. I'm not aware of Rob McCracken saying anything publicly about Anthony Joshua. Maybe he said something behind the scenes that AJ don't like. I don't know. I've got no idea. All I can tell you is his relationship with Derek James, from what I can see as an outsider looking in, seems to be a lot better. Certainly than the relationship with Robert Garcia, for sure. And AJ has actually compared his relationship to Derek James to the relationship he had with McCracken, but he says Derek James is more invested than McCracken was, which is interesting. In fact, I might have been the first person in the YouTube boxing community to call for AJ to leave Rob McCracken. I was saying it long, long, long before he lost to Andy Ruiz. I was saying he needs to leave McCracken because to me, AJ wasn't developing certain aspects of his game that needed to be developed. And I've always said of any fighter, it's best to make changes before you lose. Don't ignore the cracks when they start to appear because those cracks will just get bigger and bigger and they'll eventually result in you losing. So address the issues before then. But many fighters don't because they feel guilty about sacking trainers and what have you. They've built a bond with them, a close relationship. But this is your career at the end of the day. And the trainer isn't training you out of the goodness of his heart. He's training you because he's making money. You're paying him to train you. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But just understand that it's a business relationship. It's a working relationship. If you leave that trainer, he can still train other fighters. Same goals for promoters and managers. Whereas your career is finite. You've got a small window of opportunity within which to make life-changing sums of money. So you can't be gambling with your fortunes by feeling sorry for certain trainers or managers or whatever and wanting to bring them along with you. If they're dead weight, they need to be cut off. It's your career you're talking about here. They've still got a career. Your boxing career is short. So you've got to be ruthless about it. I've been saying this for the longest. I mean, it's kind of like Lennox Lewis. He said he wished he would have hooked up with Manny Stewart sooner. By the time he did hook up with Manny Stewart, I think Lewis was about 30 years old. But of course, he did great things after that. We'll see if Anthony Joshua can do the same with Derek James. And I think he has said that he'd wished he hooked up with Derek James earlier. Because he's learning things now that he's never been taught before. But the proof is in the pudding. Let's see if he can perform under Derek James. It's all well and good having a good working relationship and you're friendly with each other and you got banter and you trust the guy and all this kind of thing. But if you're not winning fights, then it's all for nothing. The Jermaine Franklin performance wasn't great, but there's more going on there than AJ just adjusting to a new trainer in terms of the technique he's being taught and the strategy. There's also the psychological aspect, the demons that Anthony Joshua has been contending with for the past few years. They've yet to be resolved and that manifested in the Jermaine Franklin fight. The guy was scared of his own shadow in there against a small heavyweight who really can't punch. And I know Derek James says, and Anthony Joshua as well, that they've been focusing on that. They've been working on that. Even Robert Garcia prior, they tried to work on that. But maybe Derek James's approach is more suitable to Anthony Joshua's personality type in terms of working on his psychology. So anyway, I'll leave it there. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Why has Anthony Joshua all of a sudden decided to come out and spill the beans on his reasons for splitting with McCracken? And I know Carl Frotch has responded by saying that AJ didn't actually sack McCracken. It was a mutual agreement for them to part company. Well, however you want to describe it, you know, lots of divorces happen by mutual consent. But 
Who initiated the divorce? Who was the person who first made the approach and said, you know what? I think we might need to go our separate ways. Who initially came up with the idea? Was it McCracken or AJ? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? Then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalog of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract, no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page via the link below this video and select the tier called the Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.